for like hours. looking at the concrete pads they are so thick and he- like they're they're big boy like i don't know what they were what previous owners of this house like what kind Is of activities it? were they doing <laughs> like, well, how thick? i mean like the actual pads themselves like they're like thick this on the, the ground thickness. like the height yeah, yeah. on the on the ground of them like they're how just big yeah how how, how how deep how deep like was probably, it probably probably like that okay four inches or so what, like, what would you say to that. doing it yourself out there with uh with a jackhammer i cut my hand today putting a solar light in the front of my house i was putting those stakes for some solar lights out front and i <laughs> you look like you're built that. for jackhammers though i feel like you'd be good at that <laughs> i could do that i could do the jackhammering but i i was like just putting these solar lights in the ground and like like in the the rock bed of the, like or the the gym my, where my japanese maple and my rose bushes and stuff is and i went to put one down and i was like oh this one's giving me some trouble i thought it was like i just needed to push a little harder with like the you know the solar light those little things on the side of the walkways mm-hmm. i thought i had to push the stake down a little harder to get past that little kind of fabric barrier you use under the rock to keep weeds from growing up and so i like went and i it doesn't ever work and i pushed (laughs) down on it and it like broke with 0.06 pounds of pressure and (laughs) it and i punched downward and sliced my finger up on the plastic and like Mm -hmm. had literally had one of those thoughts i was talking about earlier with michael where i was i had an instinct to be like you fucking idiot you can't put a goddamn solar light in your front yard you go outside for 40 seconds of yard work and you cut your hand so much you take <laughs> 10 minutes and go put gauze on it. And I'd never make it in the real world. <laughs> I'd never make it in the real world. <laughs> Thank God your job tonight is being a retard online for four hours. <laughs> and uh, I had to tell myself, like, no, it's that's just an honest to God mistake. These things. I, are, no, it's no. Okay. I do the same thing when I when I cut myself, though. You, yeah, but I call, that's I when it's deserved. It. It's just you're annoyed at yourself a little bit. Hey, you push too hard on the cheap piece of Chinese plastic, it broke and you cut yourself. Calm down. Did you so, Kyle, you talking about having that back up through the yard catastrophe reminded me. I, I bet probably like seven years ago I told this on the By the show. way, I didn't say a word. You didn't say a word. You were a good man. You were on honorable. Are they still together? I'm curious. The white boy. I believe they are. I certainly hope good they are. For what them. A, what a, yeah. Yeah. Good for them. She but, was uh, really nice. Uh, basically, I think I was probably like 13, 14 or so. And we were coming from the rink. My mom was driving me. And it was me and I think my younger brother and Joel Quinville's son who played on a team with my brother. Joel Quinville at the time was the head coach of the St. Louis Blues. And so big, like, guy in the the hockey community in St. Louis, very, like, tight. And so, like, the the professionals like Chris Pronger and Al McInnes and Joel Quinville and all these guys would be down at the rink and their kids would be playing there. And so, like, we knew them and the, the Kachucks. And we were dropping, my mom was dropping in this Honda Odyssey. I remember we were dropping him off at Joel Quinville's house, head coach of the blues after a practice. And it was rainy. It was shitty out. It was wet. And he was the coach of a professional hockey team. And so it was a very, very, very nice yard, very Mm -hmm. nice house, beautiful yard and a very long straight driveway. And we, my mom pulls up into it and lets him out and he goes in he's like see you later you know like i'll see you see you next time and she starts backing out and i remember like his driveway was big enough she could have done a little whoop de doop and like come back out straight but she started backing up and a hundred yard driveway however long it was and i think i think we got it about eight feet backward before (laughs) i felt the car go and just in the yard and mm-hmm. she is my mom just forging ahead just driving two wheels like tilted in this guy's yard and i'm like mom mom you're in joel quinville's yard you're in the coach <laughs> oh of the blues God. yard get back oh on the God. on the driveway and she's like it's fine taylor it's fine and i'm like it's not fine it's not <laughs> fine <laughs> so it's not <laughs> all it's not fine and so like all the way back the full length of the driveway there is just no. a solid rut a ditch now of destroyed like yard right next to their driveway and my mom like it just didn't register with her at all how like shitty it was and so we i'm just like i'm mortified i'm like oh my god i'm gonna have to talk to you know someone else during practice and like deal with this this is really embarrassing this guy's a big hullabaloo in the hockey world and then she just backed out i looked in horror at like a 
decimated yard and then she just <laughs> drove away and this then i got why. back i and my dad my dad was there and like i waited and my mom went to go do something else and i was like dad mom drove through joel quinville's yard and he was like what <laughs> like I just, he was like what and i'm like she started backing up and then she was just in the yard and then she just went all the way through the yard and he was like oh my god like, i saw that look I choose of like to believe that's what led to the divorce. I, I would have went back. I think it was. Like, 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 <laughs> timing doesn't work out. But, <laughs> but yeah, he, my dad was He's so I, I, could that see, I could see in his eyes and face because he like he would golf with like Al McInnes and Joel Quinville and like these guys. And he was like, oh, my God. Oh, uh, He's like, do, do they know it was you who dropped him off? <laughs> like, yes, yes, they know. He's like, oh, my God. They probably just, were all like watching through the, the blinds as you did it. Like, oh, no, she'll stop. Uh, oh, oh God! Blasted, honey, that, honey! Isn't that isn't that the Kentucky bluegrass you had flown in? Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe my mom was driving like Hamas was hidden <laughs> under the yard, just, <laughs> <laughs> just blasting through it. <laughs> so your father was oh. friends with Quinville and McGinnis and Pryor. Yeah, yeah like because they like we played hockey at the same club, and so like a lot of these guys played golf together. And like what helped is that. My dad is a ridiculously good golfer, like absurdly mm. good. People will be like, oh, but I'm really good at golf. And then they play with my dad and he blows them out. He plays nonstop all the time. And so these guys, like when people retire from hockey, they start playing golf. And so they wanted someone good to play with them. And so they would invite him to come play. And that was that was neat. So I got to like hang around the blues. Why at is the time. it fun to have somebody good with you? When they're playing like triples or like a group of four or something, it's good to have someone who's really solid on there, I guess. I, I don't even know enough. Like they like in group play where like they're a group competing against other groups. I guess it was good. Oh, to have okay. one. I remember uh, Matthew and Brady Kachuk are both in the NHL right now. The, the sons of Keith Kachuk. And I remember I met Brady and Matthew Kachuk. They're both like seven they're like seven and nine years younger than me or something like that. Seven and eight years younger than me. And the the Kachucks invited us to their box to watch a blues game when I was probably, you know, nine or no, I'm sorry, not nine, like 12. And mm -hmm. so these kids were like three, four. And I remember my dad like giving me a talk like the whole way up there. He was like, you behave. We are with <laughs> blues players and we're going to their box and you will behave and i remember being like i do behave like i don't know what i'm going to be in trouble for but like <laughs> i was on my best yeah. behavior and like every so often i would just like because all the adults were talking behind me and i was sitting in those little chairs up a little closer to that mini glass that overlooks the ice and then i would like get up every so often and go get a coke because i wanted a soda and like that was my big oh my god it's a box as many hot dogs and sodas as I, as I please. And so I was doing that the whole time. And I had to end up getting multiple sodas because I would go get a Coke. I would open it and then like drink some, put it next to me. And then it was either Matthew or Brady Kachuk, probably Matthew at the time was like four years old. He came over and he just kept knocking my soda over. Like this little kid, he just kept going, whap. And I remember in my head being like, that's Keith Kachuk's kid. And dad said to behave. <laughs> and so I just would like, you're like, good pick hit, up. Little yeah. <laughs> good hit, little guy. And so I just pick up the soda and throw that one away and then open up another one. And then mm -hmm. he'd come over like 10 minutes later and knock, knock my soda over again. Oh, got and another so just, one. Two points yeah. for you. <laughs> Matthew, little did I know he'd be an NHL. Hey, I'm Taylor, star. by the way. We should be friends for life. We should be great friends. Yeah, I, I have, I'm thinking about it. I have a bunch of good like hockey stories knowing those guys. Eric Johnson was the first overall pick by the St. Louis Blues in 2006, I want to say. So I was 15. He was 18. And he was boarding with the McInneses at Al McInneses' house, and which is pretty common if you're like a young 18-year-old first-round draft pick, first overall especially, that you're going to go to the NHL right away, more likely than not. And so they'll board you with an existing NHL family with, with people on there so that you can kind of get acclimated. And I knew Al McInnes' son at the time. And so he and I were playing shinny hockey in Al McInnes' basement, which is like a little where it's where, you know, those little tiny hockey necks, like yay big made of plastic. And then mm -hmm, those little mm -hmm. plastic uh, sticks with the, the foam ball. And basically you're on your shins, you're on your knees and it's one-on-one -on -one and you're trying to play hockey versus each other. It's, it's so much fun. Shinny is great. And hmm. me and uh, Al's son were playing and because I'm a goalie, it gives me a tremendous advantage in this game because second nature, I'm always keeping myself square to the net. Whereas someone who plays forward or defense isn't going to be doing that as much. They're going to leave open 
scoring opportunities. And so I beat Al McInnes' son, and then I uh, look over, and Eric Johnson, first overall dra draft pick, comes down in the basement. He's like, what are you guys doing? Well, uh, at this time, Al McGinnis' son is like four years, one year younger than me. I'm three years younger than Eric Johnson. And he's like, I want to play. And he's like an 18-year-old first-round draft pick <laughs> in the NHL. And so he's unbelievably competitive. <laughs> unbelievably competitive. And I won. Oh, I, yeah. I beat Eric Johnson. Johnson, shout out. Shout out you, mm -hmm. Eric Johnson has a, has a good career. Loser. He Eric loser. Johnson, loser. I, you're I, lucky I, we're giving you this attention. Oh, yeah, we're you're <laughs> welcome, Eric. And so <laughs> we were playing, and like at first it started off where he wasn't going that hard on me, and then he realized like, oh, this kid's like, and I'm also like a pretty big 15 year old. And so by the end of the game, he and I are both sweaty, and he's like, when I have possession of the puck, he's like leaning on me like hard trying to move me and I'm mm -hmm. like bounce trying to bounce it off the wall to get it into the into the net and I won and he got like like he kind of got up like with a, a little bit of a huff of ah, fuck like, mm. like like mad about it and I remember for a long time I'm 32 now and I still remember that and being like hell yeah yeah the, the king of shit if you wanted yeah I could have <laughs> and by that doing a little college football math I should have been the first overall draft uh -huh. pick <laughs> in the NHL. I mean, I, I bet if some of those scouts had seen that that Shinny footage, they may have, may have had some other ideas. They would have. I kicked ass at Shinny. So, Eric Johnson, mm -hmm. invite open. You want a rematch anytime, any place. <laughs> oh, I've got. I've made $100 million in one Stanley Cups. Who cares, brother? Mm -hmm. I, Dude, I took you down in Al basement, basement. In, two, in 2005. <laughs> basement champion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you guys know any like professional athletes growing up or like? No. Can, no. My <laughs> father knew um, Pat Croce. <laughs> I, I forget where you're from. <laughs> you guys know any uh, celebrities or anything as a child, you know, hang out with them and stuff, befriend them? No. It's just because we're in the same, same circles. To, to ask Tom, <laughs> have you ever been in the midst of making one of your videos and you had like a change of heart about the person you were making it on? Where it's like, no. oh man, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no, um, I am working on one right now that's kind of a uh, tangential to a friend of the show, uh, Blade. Um, oh, okay. I'm working mm, on that one. Okay. Um, Maybe you can fill us in a bit on more on what he's been up to. We're not well, as today. The latest thing I saw after the whole thing with Willie um, dying, obviously, was uh, he yeah. was walking in the middle of the road, like on the median in the middle of the night. Um, filming himself walking with like cars going by and like swerving around him. That was the last thing I saw. Um, apart from that, um, he's upset about the fact that people told people said not to donate to his streams because he's just going to buy more alcohol. He was kind of upset about that. I think I want to say <laughs> Game Star or something said like don't donate to his streams, and he was like, he's already telling people not to donate to my streams. Like you know, I just like need money, man. Like content, man. Um, and that was like when he he was you know maybe three shots in so basically sober mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i mean he's he's just he's super fucked up i think he's probably gonna die pretty soon i wouldn't be shocked at all um yeah it's it's pretty I, you know i keep start might be almost on to something here though like like if you really wanted to help blade then the deal that you'd want to make with him as a fan base Yes, would to be, starve him yeah well no it would be like we'll only <laughs> donate to constructive content like if you want to go in the park today and go for a walk and have a picnic, I'll donate to that. But, but if he, you crack up yeah. crack a beer, no. He's immediately um, gonna take that money and buy beer. <laughs> you yeah, know well, I buy his his I, Jager I, I can't Meister. change is, his I, life. I can only change his streams. Is he uh I, I thought I heard something where he wasn't drinking after um after the Willie situation. I assume based no. on what you're saying that that's not happening he's no, still I've, drinking i'm uh, yeah that's that is my belief um <laughs> I, but going through his history has been fun just reading about old cod stuff because i used to watch some of that back in the day like x jaws and people like that and yeah. all the alki david stuff i want to do a video just about alki david because that guy's story is so interesting to me and i don't even totally understand it yet um, that'd be a good one when's yeah. the the blade one dropping or do you not know yet <laughs> I don't know yet. I've been waiting because uh, it's actually pretty much done. I want to do an interview with Keemstar to get his thoughts because I know he was Blade's friend for a long time. And apparently, I just found this out recently, Keemstar paid for his rehab like three or four times like to get him in rehab, um, really? at least according to him. And then he like flunked out every single time. Um, you okay, out. Kyle? I see you <laughs> struggling a little bit over there. <laughs> You're no, right. If that's, uh, if that's true, that's really cool of him. If he, uh, yeah. If he paid for 
Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, he. I, I assume he didn't just outright lie about that. Um, I mean, who knows? <laughs> yeah, right? I, it's... I, I know for a fact Keemstar is a rabid liar because he talks about me. But what did he say about you? That you're awesome and tall? <laughs> for example, I remember at Woodcraft, um, we had this guy who was buying stuff and charging things back. And uh, he bought like five grand from Woodycraft. Woodycraft. Another, I think he ran a thousand dollar ad on the show. It was like six grand in my universe and four grand to like other Twitch streamers. And he charged back all ten thousand dollars now when he was buying at woodycraft we observed his like out of this world buying patterns so we cut him off and we talked to his mom and we're like this guy's spending a ton is this like i'm sorry okay? you talked to game star's mom no no the, the customer his name was oh Joe i'm so i'm so i'm sorry like <laughs> no so, I so talk this, to his mom. <laughs> this player at woodycraft was spending a lot of money five grand at woodycraft five grand elsewhere and uh um, we taught, we call the player's mom and, and she's like, it is okay. This is within his gaming budget. It's all thumbs up. So we're like, okay, you know, what are we supposed to do? And, um, then when he tired of the server and no longer wanted to play at Woodycraft, he charged back all 5,000, which by the way, cost me like 12,000 because he was buying like $5 amounts. And not only do we have to pay back the $5, but there's a $35 charge for getting charged back. So it's like, fuck, we, it was like, I was at like 12 grand. Other people were out, whatever they were out. And um, I hired an attorney to like chase this down and figure it out. And really my goal was to stop other people from doing the same thing. We had people who would buy stuff and charge it back like it was a game. Meanwhile, it's costing me $35 a pop. And Keemstar did a video on it. And he said that this poor innocent soul meant to pay a hundred, left out the decimal point and paid 10,000. That is not what happened at all. That is not even a thing that can happen. It's like Amazon. Like you don't choose your own prices on shit. Like you don't enter in the price. He completely made that up out of thin air and said that I was like punishing and going after this poor innocent child over a typo. You don't think maybe the child like just told him that Kim just felt bad and believed it. Right. I don't think that at all. I think Keemstar completely made it up that he wasn't in contact with this kid. And I think he also knew the store is online. You can see it. You don't enter your own prices. No one thought that was true except people who believe Keemstar's lies. Why do so, you think he did that to like sensationalize it? Keemstar has hated me for 15 years now. It goes both ways. So um, really? Well, yeah. So he's made a lot of videos just telling lies about me and um, or just painting me in a bad light and uh because i'm the target of his videos not for a long time but because i've been the target of his videos i know the truth and i know that keemstar makes shit up well i guess it's a good thing i'm about to do a video with him then right uh <laughs> you can get to um, the bottom of it yeah yeah ask him about that I, 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 would, I would believe that he paid for blades rehab because he, he like i they used to be really tight like they, they used to be boys. I think they, I think they like, yeah, he's very successful financially. I think they lived together at some point back in the day, right? Or maybe they uh, did. Yeah. They, they maybe not live together. Blade, maybe like a keem star allowed blade to live with him. Blade moved to Buffalo it. during the cod days to like live there, which is, uh, around the oh, time that the uh, podcast together. Yeah, they yeah. did. What was it? Bad, bad kids club. I think that sounds right. Something like so yeah, close yeah, to that. Bad yeah. kids. You know, I think I don't know where he moved from, but I think of Buffalo is not a fun place to live. So that he moved from. Right. I think I think Seattle. I want to say. I'd uh, much rather be in Seattle than Buffalo. It's either rain or snow. Yeah, I think Blade said there. he didn't like Buffalo, but um, it's cold. Keemstar likes it, so you know you can. He does like Fair it. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah I, I just yeah. looked over at Blade's we'll channel. He it. is still drinking. Mm -hmm. drinking right now as we speak. He, he could be right now yeah i don't know what damn that's so wild like you, i just like you click on a stream scrub two hours forward and he's just like obliterated part of the problem with that video is he's like a copyright abuser serially so i just don't want to deal with like a copyright strike for you know a week and a half when he inevitably strikes the video and then i can't make money for a week or whatever like that's pretty annoying oh blade's been known to copyright strike yeah yeah oh just because you'll have to use clips of him like saying exactly something yeah or, oh and he'll well, just file a false suck. dmca and then it's like i'm not going to sue him back you know 
Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to get any money out of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like, you just have to file an appeal and then he gets my legal name and address, which is also fun. So <laughs> it's just a yeah. whole, a whole issue. Have you come, uh, come upon anything alarming that's like not in the, the public storyline of blade going through oh. the story or not? Oh, it's long? all, it's, it's all out there. It's literally all out there. I mean, his entire life mm-hmm. since 2009 or something or 11 is all documented uh, publicly. So um, everything you want to know about blade is all on live stream and it's him saying it himself. Some very funny moments though, like back in the day when uh, <laughs> there was some point in time when he was talking to some girl and you know, uh, if, if you know a lot about blade, you'll know, or even a little, you'll know when he drinks, he, he gets a little racist with it um yep. and uh he was talking to some girl and he was like you like black guys she was like no uh yeah they're fine and he was like you n-word lover and then she leaves and then one of his like friends calls him and he's like hey hey blade you gotta get off stream right now man you're on twitch you're gonna get banned like just get off delete the vod and like sober up and in the morning you'll be fine and blade's like you're a it says the n-word again oh, wow. <laughs> and then hangs up and just keeps streaming <laughs> Um, another great moment from Blade is, uh, <laughs> at, at one point he stands up, like he, you know, stands up with his ass to the camera and pulls his pants down and like puts his fingers in his asshole. That's a good one. Yes. Uh, that, I, that I've heard that one. Yeah. I have not been blessed to see the clip and I don't I've think I want seen to. It. Well, I have I've been blessed. I have seen the eye of horror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've had to like be, you're fact checking it. You're like, all right, let's cross reference these butthole skin lines <laughs> with the other times he's For research, that. for research. Well, we're trying to track the, the progress of his butthole over time to see how much it's been. When he was, uh, when he was like <laughs> macking on that girl while her husband had just stepped away. Yeah. Was wild one too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was a fan of his, his wife. The guy was a huge mm-hmm. fan. I yeah, heard. like a super fan. I think they were at his house. The funniest part of that is, um, so that starts at like a fan meetup with Keemstar. And uh, so Blade's there, Keem's there. And then this guy comes with this girl and they're not married at that point. And he's like, oh my God, Blade, I want you to see this. And he proposes to her in front of Blade. And then two years later is when the groping thing happened, Goodness. which is like oh. the whole marriage is tied to Blade somehow. That's <laughs> worse than I life. thought. Uh, yeah, that th- they should have known from the start there. Yeah, having destined for greatness. In, in Man, when did it stop being about stabbing people in Call of Duty? Is what I want to know. <laughs> I think around like 2013, 2012, maybe uh, Tom. Would whenever know. COD, whenever COD died, like when that's COD was kind of on the see. way out, and Minecraft was the new thing. That's like the beginning of the end for him. Yeah, remember Chill Sunday commentary? Just knifing people in COD 4. Simpler times. Simpler times. With uh, White Boy 7th Street. With White Boy. No no shenanigans going on in the back of uh, RVs. None, nothing <laughs> like that. Shenanigans. Yeah. Is that what you call that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, shenan- A little, uh, uh, yeah, non-reciprative reciprative play. Is that tomfoolery? Movie? Yeah, tomfoolery. <laughs> uh, groping an unconscious girl. Like, that's that's what I believe Epic. it was, right? I mean, that's that's he says he didn't. I don't know. He you told can, Chris like, Hansen he didn't, but you can I mean, watch we can the infer, video. <laughs> we can infer you can't what happened. See I see everything, though. I, for people who didn't see the video, Blade saunters over to the front of the RV, I think, and you kind of see his feet, and it kind of looks like. There's some level of snuggling, humping, something happening on. But you're looking at feet under a blanket. So he says, like, but he says he went to bed. I don't think he went to bed. He was, he, I, he was, he was, he was doing. He's a restless sleeper. It would seem. Maybe they were like doing jujitsu. He was like putting her and like they the were so or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah, because that clip it was him talking to that Norwegian or Finnish guy Bjorn, Bjorn yep, and yep. he's like, I'm gonna go back there, and Bjorn's like, to the passed out unconscious girl and he's like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go back there he's like okay i think blade like, says i'm gonna have like, sex with her i think he says that something like maybe even that's what he said like even worse like that let's hope he didn't like he went back yeah there let's hope he didn't. allegedly i don't know <laughs> let's hope he didn't say that Let's hope but, he did not say that because then that would be a pretty open and shut case. <laughs> I'm, pretty posi- I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive he says that, and then in the follow-up interview, he's like, "I was just joking. We're making jokes like that all night. I just like wasn't going to do that. You know, I just went to bed." In character, officer, I did grope her, but you can hear me saying honk honk. 
when I was grabbing her boobs. <laughs> officer, look, let's, officer, let's be serious about this. You're not going to unrape her now, so let's just all go home and not worry about this. <laughs> you know what? Let's chalk this up to a who knows. You know <laughs> who done it? Who done it? I, I, my my take on this who's to say? And the officers are like, no, go to get in the car. No harm, <laughs> no foul. She wasn't last, even alive. She wasn't last even warning, you know? sir. Last what warning. What did uh, what did the girl say about it? I don't she even know. Got, what she her... said she got raped. Yeah, that's raped? what she said. Grope. Yeah. No, I think I think she said that she got she got sexually assaulted in the back there. Yeah. Oh, I believe her. Gucci's. Believe all women. Did she? Oh man. I'm trying to. I was holding out hope that it that's not what happened. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, 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 like I guess, I guess, I mean, technically, we we don't have like a GoPro video of him doing it, but you know, because well, I, I think this I might like, be another case of a lady lying on a rich, successful titan of industry. <laughs> Wait a minute, they do that, don't they? She was trying to get all those. All right, those might not be that. All right it's not that. <laughs> so I. I my suspicion is it's way easier to like emotionally recover from a guy coming up and kissing your neck in an unwanted way compared to like fucking you. But if that's not what she said happened, if she said that I, he like was back there molesting her, then yeah. I, based on the video, I am inclined to believe her. I, I don't know. I if saw the video me. and I think I was holding out hope that he made a pass at her, got shot down and that's all that happened. Actually, no, I, I no, that was it. definitely not like a pass and shoot down thing. Like she was out and he like ambled slash stumbled back there, got in bed, a lot of movement. Like, well, who's to say? He, I, I'm very biased. I, I was just being biased and hopeful. I mean, I'm hopeful as well. I don't want to say I don't know what happened. I'm hopeful that, that nothing awful, awful, awful happened, but but you know seems like a little um, Occam's razor right now. Like what's what's I don't know that no. No I think I have a video of her saying it right now. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. It has don't to be I... a, a Rube Goldberg machine of mayhaps and oh who's to say? <laughs> and you know, and then the the uh, what's she talking about, Marble falls in the I was joking bucket and, and traps the rat. Like no, it seems seems pretty. If if I, I had no idea the girl claimed that, because that I, I just put damning. the minute long clip in there, so you guys can see uh, that. Um, but uh, oh, yeah, thank you. A little dark. I, I I will always remember Blade as that dude who walks through TSA with a pocket full of weed and ju is just somehow doesn't get detected, and the guy who uh, ate all those hot dogs in in Seattle, and and that's a nice guy, and and I never seen him do nothing to nobody. Ugh. Do people do Poor that all boy. the time? Weed? Don't they just and other stuff? No, I mean, oh, all right. So not back then. Not back then. This is this is maybe this is maybe ten years ago. Like like he just had it in his pocket though, like in his um his breast oh, pocket. <laughs> he just he he took a pack of Swishers. I don't know. Is it four or five in there? He he rolled them all up and you know with weed <laughs> and uh, and put them back in into the package and stuck it right in his breast pocket. It sticks out the top of your pocket. And he walked straight through, like the metal detectors on the. He never took it out of his pocket, and like I, there we were in uh, Seattle or wherever, and it was just like he had weed. <laughs> the <laughs> coolest guy I could find. Yeah, That's that clip crazy. does not do him any favors. The but you no, just watched the one minute video. Yeah, the yeah, victim of it saying too. like so, he wasn't charged because I didn't bring the charges forward. It happened though. It happened. Like it's been hard to recover from. Like fuck Blade and fuck Bjorn is what she said. That's, that's really truncated. Yeah, she said she hates them. Yeah, and, and the only thing Taylor didn't mention is like <laughs> she's in a lot of obvious emotional distress. Yeah, and it, I believe her. After that happens, there's this like hilarious clip when they're in the RV and Blade's like, "Man, what if we just like dump her on the side of the road, man?" And Bjorn's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> He's like, "Just yeah. get rid of her, man. Like she's not content. <laughs> she's, she's not content. <laughs> Damn, cold blooded." Yeah. And he's wrong. <laughs> We're still talking about that content years later. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, there's clips. There's clip after clip. When he's sober, he says he's innocent. When he's drunk, there's clips of him being like, "I do it again." So you know, it's just like, man, I'm having a hard time standing beside my old friend Blade these days. <laughs> I hear you. He, he said he was. He said I would do it again. 
I, I got the clip, yeah. Oh, I, All right, man, well, I, I, man, he's a clip factory. He's a facts finder. Bob's I got receipts, man. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't, I don't like any of that one bit. And I, I, I clicked that little link, and I didn't know what the link was gonna be, but it's just some some little girl like complaining about getting raped and it's yeah, that's pretty hard to find. <laughs> that's, that is a way I to didn't put think, it i guess i i thought you had like a blurry like gopro that saw some legs twitch in the dark or something but it's like her saying yes he did this to me and i don't like yeah. that's hard to watch i don't like any of this now i liked it when i just didn't look into this enough to know kyle watch that clip that and Tom it was just nebulous thinks, and tell me where you're coming down now oh, oh come on now Oh, All right, I'm if you can on, still find an avenue, you need to go into politics. <laughs> yeah, it happens right around eight. I'll be quiet. Yeah, he said it three times, right? Yeah, said it three times. He said he would do it again. Three, three times, times a charm. He did. That, that's not. Charm. That's an imprecise. It's paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, that's imprecise. He was more cruel about it. He said, "I'll grape." Again, three times in a row. Out of context. <laughs> yeah, out, out of context. <laughs> he was practicing lines for a play, actually. So uh, I was yeah, going to think what context could account. possibly fix that, but that would. None. We all have different definitions of words, okay? It could be something. Okay, all right. I've got, I've, got, I've got newer information because I watched the video that was recommended after the one that you sent me, okay. and it's her, it's her in like an alley. It looks like something from Trailer Park Boys, by the way. They're like in an alley doing drugs or some shit. She's sitting cross-legged. And what she said was, he didn't rape me, but he did sexually assault me. So, still pretty awful what's happened here. That varies by state. Like, like I was just saying, in, in New York, only wow. penises can rape. In other states, like fingering can be rape. Yeah, so it could maybe she's talking like legally or something. I think I feel like to me, if you go in, it's probably rape. Yeah, if you're entering, <laughs> if you, if you violate someone's bodily autonomy in a way they don't want sexually, what about what about a wet willy? Uh, that's well, that's just awesome. Really I do that to girls sexual. all the time. If you know, oh, it's if not you for give, you. It's not. Kyle, if you give me a wet willy, yeah, it's a prank. If you're hard, it's rape. How am I going to get it in your ear if it's not hard? See, that's True. what I'm talking about. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're you, it, it, that's that's molestation. You would have molested. <laughs> yeah. Me. Even if you know, it was your finger, it. if you if you stuck your wet finger like in my mouth or in my ear, yeah. and I look down and you're erect, yeah. I'm calling the authorities. <laughs> you're a real rat. I don't, <laughs> you're a real rat. <laughs> I don't know if I can be around you. I mean, I, you know, things happen. You know, <laughs> I, we have a few drinks at dinner. I'm gonna go for a wet willy. It's just common practice. Yeah, we each split. Wet willies are considerate because he uses vodka. lube. Let yeah. me tell you how upset. Otherwise, it'd be a dry willy. I don't like that shit. If I'm being honest, like I remember in, in, Wait, in school. Oh, I, no, I can't remember the last I thought time you I were got talking one. about Blade sexually assaulting that girl. And I'm like, wow, coming in hot. <laughs> I'm trying to pivot. <laughs> what don't you like? What I'm don't you like? I'm trying to pivot. <laughs> wet, well, I, I would hate to get a wet willy. That would upset mm -hmm. me to no end. Like, even if a girlfriend or somebody did it to me, I would be like, what the fuck have you done to me? I'd be pretty upset. Like, maybe okay. her little baby finger goes too deep and like deafens me the rest of the we way. We have our boundaries. Uh, my hearing's like a ticking time, like ticking time bomb type thing. Like with Taylor's uh, Taylor's glasses, they're gonna keep getting thicker, and I'm gonna have to go to a hearing aid at some point. I feel like I, I read this study, and apparently, and like, like you know, those little size. those little hairs in your ear that that you know move back and forth with the sound. Like I guess the damage you do to them, young, you know, at a younger age, they're just gonna get brittle and and degrade over time. So I fully expect to need a hearing aid at some point. Kyle, you're looking healthy, looking like you're back to a hundred percent. From what? My my illness? Your illness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am feeling better. Uh, not 100% maybe, but like 95. Feel Your good. suffering is part of why I got that flu shot. I was like, I, it's... You, you know, you forget how horrible it is. I always say this. You, you think flu and you're like, yeah, flu sucks, but whatevs. You have flu and it's like, oh, my God. I forgot how miserable a human can get. There yeah, is the nice slap. Like stomach flu weight like not all the flus are the stomach flu but even like when i was younger there was that secret bit of you that when you got the stomach flu it was kind of like you know this isn't all bad taylor emerges seven pounds lighter very briefly and then he you know he goes back up to because he rewards himself with pizza for it, getting better 
I can't recall ever keeping off the stomach flu weight loss. Like, Water. like you said, seven pounds, yeah. eight pounds. <laughs> and it, of course, some of it's dehydrating, so it doesn't really count. But like, it all comes back every time. Like, yeah. I've lost weight on a cut. And I'm like, well, I'm, like, I'm on top of my game right now, so I'm not going to like gorge it back. But yeah. it comes back. It's not do you ever, uh, do you do, ever do much fasting? Ugh. I did... Um, the juice fasting one time mm. but but yeah. like just a water fast you know just cutting out food for 20 well, it was like hours or so. celery smooth like smoothies that you would have a heart celeries and beets was all us I water drank. fasters do we, we we draw a line okay if, if there's any color in there that's it that's it we, no you, beetroot powder you can have lemon you. Wa- there's discussions about whether lemon water is okay and coffee is okay okay like like i'm telling you um mm. i saw like Dana, fundamentalists I because, <laughs> they're like fundamentalists yeah we we're the fucking we're not the united methodist that is not nearly right wing enough for us we're serious yeah. about this you're I the west Dana white Baptist church did a did a 86 hour uh water fast uh he started saturday night and then he posted some pictures today who looks ridiculous dana white you know he's in very oh. good shape i don't know if you uh, i know i know dana white's uh yes old people we we go through highs and lows and he's having a high right now yeah, yeah, high T. Uh, yeah, right now for for Dan, he's peaking his, his physically. Um, he looks a- exceptional. Looks very good. You know, he's in a he's in a a job where he's always surrounded by some of the best looking physiques on the planet, male and female, and I, he fits right in. Honestly, like like he, he looks really fucking good. What's impressive? God damn, he good does for him. look good. It's funny his face doesn't look as good as his body does. Like how well, you can't. Still... Yeah. You know, they fucking chin ups with your nose like you can't no. fix that man <laughs> no, you just get let little... me rephrase it like he, he yeah. has a, a ripped six pack there especially on the right like the picture on the right you can really see all 12 of those things or six i'm sorry mm. and uh but his face is still like chubby ish like mm. i don't know i mean you know he's an older fella he's he's, he's in yeah. his later 50s do you think he now? should keep shaving Maybe. his chest I say just be here, yeah. man. Yeah, you would say that, wouldn't you, fucking Bigfoot? Yeah, I'm yeah. all about what he's doing here. Like, putting that guard on there and buzzing everything down to, you like... You don't shave so, your chest, so, bigot. I, I, well, I, it depends who's going to be looking at my chest, right? Like, if I'm going to show everybody my chest, I did shave it. I w- My arms were shaved in those pictures of me. Everything's shaved. This is just your classic everything. anti-Southern European bigotry coming out again. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have hair everywhere. Oh, it shouldn't be sprouting up all over your shoulders in your 30s suddenly. I, I like how Taylor tries, to pretend, Taylor tries to pretend he's a real Italian. No, never. I'm an, I'm an American mutt who just happens yeah. to be hairy. But that's a real thing is that my shoulders, like, it's it's happening. Like <laughs> I read that Italians get it. super pissed if you say they're not real Italians. So I thought I'd fly it up there and see what happened. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, there, there are some people like that, but it's like no, like, like if you're an American, you've been one for a while. You're kind of just a a hodgepodge of everything, probably. Yeah. Just different percentages, but, right? Like I, I'm probably so not as Irish as Kyle. Shoulder uh, fuzz, you say? Yeah, Coming like it, I probably starting in my mid late twenties, I'd like look at one shoulder and be like, "That's a long." long black hair you know sprouting mm. out of there and you know sometimes do a little shave they'll get rid of that now yeah. it's like they're starting to come in on the sides of the arm over here not right. enough like a thicket but enough that like if i don't do something about this it you know i don't want to have robin williams body and that's what he had he killed they're massing at your it. southern border, and if you don't build a wall soon, I mean, the demographics of your whole upper body are going to no, change. southern border is long lost. <laughs> 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 it's been years since puberty. We lost that battle at 13. He's in Montana at this point. Yeah. Like, That's why I have to be here. tactical with my pubic hair, because I can't just go scorched earth down there. I can't go turtle shell Dennis Reynolds lasering, yeah. because, because my the, thighs the and the surrounding area... Like I need to, I need to go into a black barber and have him fade me, like yeah. all like, <laughs> to, <laughs> to my. Did they like, square garage. you up? Yeah, You're they square up. <laughs> <laughs> Looking ridiculous yeah. with this trapezoid. So that's yeah. is that a, a journey you encountered also, Woody? Getting hairier as I, you got older. Uh, not in the same way though. I have a birthmark on my shoulder. I don't know if you can even see. It. You can't see it in the camera. Yeah. You see how it's, um. That is a birthmark that some guys get for having high testosterone. I got it when I was 17. And uh, um, 
it's it grows hair out of it. So I have one shoulder that had I that I shave it all the time, uh, that would be fuzzy. Okay, nice. not That's too bad. Worst. And you Kyle, you're over there app? with like a like a Spartan slave boy. Yeah, um, I I've just got like you know definitely not femboy le levels of, of hairlessness, um, but. It doesn't take much to get me just turtle smooth, you know. And the transition, I know what you're talking about. Like, in my case, like like I said, like like when I took those pictures or whatever uh, for for the the fitness thing, mm -hmm. I just nared everything. You know, I use nair, so I'm melting the hairs off of everywhere. I panicked with nair. I put it on there, and I got to like six minutes, and I was like, Kyle said, no longer than ten, and so I like got in there, and no longer than five. Oh. Well, either way, it didn't, it didn't like, it was just like a. Wait, did you beat Nair in like, like Wings I beat must the have, surgery? I must have beaten <laughs> Nair the way Wings beat the like surgery. Thick it, hair overcame <laughs> Nair. It will. It, it, didn't, it literally it didn't will. wipe all off. I thought I wasn't wiping it hard enough. And it, it didn't, won't. Yeah. Um, so if anybody out there is like, I don't know, maybe you're getting hairless for, for whatever reason, maybe you're taking some pictures for your fitness or whatever. Uh, that Nair for men stuff, I don't know if it matters that it's for men, it probably just removes the fragrance. But I would leave it on for like four to five minutes the first time and and then wipe it all off, you know, like scrub it off with a towel or something in the shower. I wore gloves in the shower because I didn't want continuously rubbing my hands in acid. Are we just know, going as, bald like a baby dick? Is that the goal? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or but but but, you know, I would take it and like put it on like my chest, like a strip of it on my chest if I'm doing that, for example. But you don't want to burn a whole red strip of your chest by leaving it on too long. So I would leave it on for like four or five minutes and then wash it off. And it wouldn't all come off. But I'd be like, tomorrow it will, though. Next time it will. You know, you're like, oh, I'd, OK. So you just do iterative refinement. On yeah. There, yeah. I, I would rather do three light treatments than one that's borderline burning your skin off. How and, do you get your I, scrotum? Do you uh, sauce you, that I up? I tough too? it out. I sauce it up. I, 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 <laughs> I, I fucking I'm down there. Now, you don't want to get on your dick. So you got to be kind of careful. I put a condom on my dick. And then I, I take the uh, the nair and I get the boys down there, get them good, good and, and I watch that timer. I set a timer for three minutes and e -e 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 -e, I'm like, it's time. I got to like get that bomb. shit off my balls. Take that seriously. Why don't you get nair in your dick? Like, I, it, yeah, it's the same. My skin, dick's not hairy, but it's not going to hurt it, right? Sensitive. It but you acted it. like it's the know. most sensitive thing. It's translucent skin. I mean, I can see the ve blood vessels and veins in there. I don't want it there. Yeah, but you can see that on your feet. <laughs> I also don't nair my feet. I you should. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> I bet you do nair your feet. You have hairy feet. I do nair my feet. I do. I do nair them. I do. Um, that or I run just a trimmer over them for real. Because when I, I put socks on, like the hair goes backwards and it's it start it's aches when you take them off. I'm sure you've had that on your lower legs. <laughs> I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys all like weed guys? Uh, I'm I'm glad it's legal. Yeah. I don't identify that way. But yes, I okay. I do not want to identify as a weed guy. That's embarrassing. <laughs> are, are, are you like a weed guy? I'm straight edge. This is uh, lavender. <laughs> That's okay. lavender. No, he's a he's a big weed guy. I see. Are you? Are I'm you not. A, I'm not a weed guy. I'm like kind of anti weed. I'm like very cringe about it, to be honest. Um, really? So you're anti weed? That's where I was not long ago. Call it five years ago. I mean, just it's, I I can't speak for everyone, but in my personal life, I've not found anything productive from it. It makes me very lazy and annoying. So I'm personally. curious. What, when I was anti-weed, I was anti-weed for me. Like, you could smoke as much as you want. I had no judgment or or I was certainly pro-legal weed. I just didn't want it in me. Is that where you are or would you make it illegal again? Like, what do you think? I would never make it illegal. I think people should be able to do what they want. But I just – I personally am, like, really – uh, I've just, I'm like, I'm, I'm 21, so I'm like relatively mm -hmm. young. That is like, young. I've seen a lot of like people destroy their shit from weed. Like, smart kids with good opportunities just like sink into weed as like a coping mechanism for their issues and just like become fucking losers. And I'm like afraid of that. So I'm trying to like not be a big substance guy. I mean, I'll drink now and then, but the weed is just like, I, 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 I think weed is, weed is fine. There's a lot of people who like are fine on it, you know, Mr. Joe Rogan. Okay, he's fine. Um, but uh, I feel like it's like, I don't know, it's kind of destructive. I feel like it's almost too accepted for a lot of people. I've seen people get on anti-anxiety meds. And then when they do, suddenly they're like more okay with bad grades. They're more okay with low performance. They're just less stressed about all the problems. <laughs> is the mortgage due? It's going to be okay. That's what I feel like. The weed is like a Rick and Morty nihilism thing for a lot of people. I feel like I the weed... There's a parallel there to what I just described with anti, mm -hmm. um, 
Did I say antidepressants? I did. I'm going anxiety. for the SRIs type. Anti-anxiety is what one. one. Yeah. 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 So anti-anxiety. When you take like Lexapro or something, suddenly you're not killing yourself to like get ahead at work, solve all your yeah. problems, et cetera. You're just okay with where you are. And that can be a negative. Like anxiety is what pays the fucking mortgage. Yeah. I yeah, never considered could... that of Lexapro uh, or, okay. or something like that. I'm, I'm not disputing it. I know I hated Lexapro. It just felt like I was numbed out. I was only mm. taking it as part of my legal defense. <laughs> I okay. swear to God. Like, and as soon as it became like a non thing, I quit cold turkey. You're not supposed to. And it was mm -hmm. one of the worst things I've ever done. Um, it, it really was awful coming off of Lexapro. It was awful. What was like okay. the. I have two. Well, I want to cover what you're talking about. First, what's it like to get off and what's it like to be on? I would have um, being on it just felt kind of like being numbed out. Like uh, you're you're kind of in this in the doldrums where uh, nothing can be great and nothing can be terrible. Everything can just kind of be okay uh, or or flavors of okay. Uh, so there's no joy. Yeah, no no exuberance. Certainly, you're not like like having that. Like I remember I was playing PUBG at the time and I wasn't being as happy with my victories. I was like, I just won one. Why am I not? I'm having a meltdown over this. I usually like I'm not great at this game. I don't win a lot of these. Mm -hmm. And uh but but uh coming off of it, not only did I just feel look it, feeling weird, just just sort of I don't know, this almost felt like a stomach cramp that went all the way to the back of my spine and into my brain or something like that. Just felt queasy all the time when I was coming off of it. But the real oh, thing shit. was I had these sort of electrical shocks that I would feel in my brain. And that. like it would be like you sort of it's slip into a day if, if you slip into like a daydream or something, you're just kind of just for a second. Maybe you're waiting on like a, a door to open or, or the car to get washed or something. And then when I would come out of it, it would be with this start of like being frightened and startled. And then also like an electrical pain in my goddamn head. And I was like, what is this? And I was, I'm like Googling it. And it's like, yeah, this is cold turkey Lexapro. Don't. And, and then there's two paragraphs of don't go off Lexapro, cold turkey. And I'm like six days after my last pill. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm not going back. I'm not going right. back. We're not yeah, turning my, the car around. I'm my man. friend got off Lexapro <laughs> more slowly than you. Like he lowered his dose and he mm -hmm. had the same symptom now. So on the, right. uh, on the weed thing, like I do agree with you, Tom, that there is almost a, a cultural push to be like, well, it's not alcohol. It's not cocaine. It must be totally harmless, and you can do it yeah. all day, every day, and that's fine. Like it's natural. It's a plant, right? It's natural. Every plant, everything that's ever come from Earth is fine to eat, I guess. Yeah, because it's natural. Arsenic's natural. Stop using that as your. If, everything is mostly I'm not... from plants. Like, but it's like if you if you allow yourself. But weed comes out of the to... ground like that. Can we just agree on that? It's like. You don't have to I'm do not anything. I'm denying to it. it comes from the ground. Yeah, I'm just arsenic saying, doesn't jump out of the ground. Like, is that a piece of? Wait, you doesn't know, it? You gotta like. I thought arsenic I'm sure that, exists naturally. Well, I don't yeah, know. We gotta get a whole bunch of it, and purify it right, and then and melt all the good arsenic down and filter out the dirt and like like make a make it cobra venom. Then cobra venom's natural. It just comes yeah. from snakes. Regardless well, of that, like that'll get you very high if you're using. If go to heaven. I, I feel this in myself in that, like, if I smoke weed or anything like that, while mm -hmm. I still have anything at all to do for the day, whether it's this or something <laughs> else, like, I it will make me uncomfortable where I'll be like, fuck, like, why did I do that? Like, now I'm high. I still have to do what I was going to do. I'm more likely to blow off my workout. I'm more likely to procrastinate on something that I need to get done. But if Here's I smoke that at, like the end of the evening when everything's sewn up and handled for the day, I'm like, oh, this is kind of nice and relaxing. I'm enjoying this. But like there is a there are a lot of people out there who are using it 24 seven, wake and baking every day, all the time. And maybe some people can handle <laughs> so I, it, but I know I cannot. And I know so the vast majority of people cannot. And in that way, like it is going to do what Woody said and make you content with complacency. And that can be dangerous over time. The only way you can do it is if you make a list. Like before, like I'll wake up and I'll, I'll take a shower and I'll, I'll figure out what I've got to do today. Usually it's like three or four errands or something. I got to go to Lowe's and get some screws and bolts to put a fucking thing together. And then the gutter fell down on the side of the house and mm -hmm. I need a new rake. And it's like, I'll make my goddamn list before I smoke. But 
because I if I don't have that list, I won't just forget that I needed a new rake. I'll forget why I needed it. <laughs> You're not selling <laughs> what you need to rake. You, I mean, you've got to you've got to treat your uh, your uh, your smoking like a like a disability and prepare for it. You know, you have to have your <laughs> You have to have your list, just like you need your wheelchair by the bed in the morning if you're going to get up and get stuff done. Taylor, you mentioned Coke. I think, like, broadly, societally speaking, like, Coke is probably less destructive than weed because weed is just so common. Like, everyone's... Ah, crack that. cocaine, oh, counterpoint. <laughs> well, yeah, Coke is like, at least lawyers are doing it. They're getting stuff done, you know? Yeah, finance people, lawyers, uh, skinny, attractive bitches. Oh, Why my are we forgetting God. Crack? Don't get me started. Don't get me started yeah. on that one. Get the Bro. nice, nice bodies. Those girls, bodies. Girls who like do coke and smoke cigarettes. Holy shit! Let's They're go. All, it all stimmed <laughs> up. Bad teeth. <laughs> yeah, Just better blow job. Foul, foul breath. Yes, yeah, fewer oh. the teeth, the better the blow job. Cigarette like, and coke like, breath. After, oh. after you stick your dick in their mouth, you don't even want to be within like a hundred yards of your own dick. It's just completely disgusting. Foul. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> the dried you spit. You fucking and, throw it in the washing machine for like a year. Your cocaine gives you terrible breath, and obviously cigarettes do. I didn't know cocaine gave you bad breath. Yeah. Yeah, like dries you out and it's all chemically. I don't know. It must be just a bad breath compound in the the cocaine, something like that. Kyle, your your audio isn't coming in. I'm yeah, I, I appreciate that uh, that perspective because you don't get that much anymore. Where yeah, so you, many people are no. I mean, so many people are all in on like it's not even a drug, man, and it's like no, it's a drug, and mm. if you can't handle it or you allow it to make you lazy. And you don't get shit done like that compounds and a day becomes a week becomes a month becomes a year and before you know it like you've wasted valuable time so I don't use it responsibly just, folks use it responsibly i feel like emotionally it's like bad like i know people who like is a coping mechanism they like use weed to just like forget their issues and it's like i feel like there's just such an anti-stress thing now it's like a little stress is okay like you shouldn't i feel like a healthy mix between like no stress and then like wanting to kill yourself with stress like somewhere in the middle is probably where you should be yeah yeah but it's like this productivity stressed, zone there's being stressed about like paying your bills and then there's being stressed about that time you forgot your underwear in, in gym in the third grade and you know the eighth grade and, and you're like fucking why did i do that and you're like like that some weird. people some people have that and then they just like smoke weed that's bad yeah that's i bad. my friend oh. that was on lexapro I what do you what do you do briefly. just raw dog life yeah you yes. got a raw dog, okay. man. No. <laughs> my, my friend was telling me somebody flipped him the bird while driving, right? You know, so you, you probably experienced this sometime in your life. He would like perseverate on it. That means like to think about it nonstop. And and uh, just like he was spinning in his head, spinning. What did I do, man? That guy hates me. Fuck. Like I. I it's like some maybe fucking I, random maybe guy I did fuck again. up, right? Not this isn't an, a stranger he'll never see again who flipped him the bird over either a driving accident or a misunderstanding or you know i've been flipped the bird and i maintain i was right sometimes and also i've been wrong yeah. but uh um i don't sit there and think about it three days later and discuss it with my friends to get like when's the last time you flipped it when's the last time you flipped off someone in traffic oh i i don't do that anymore i do something else me either i give them the toodaloo you you, you on the toodaloo crowd no. you a thumbs up man thumbs down I, oh, right. oh, yeah, yeah. I actually, if they do something mm -hmm. awful i'm like uh. <laughs> i give them the toodaloo okay that i, I, I think that. i did it like like <laughs> two weeks ago <laughs> the bird yeah i flipped someone the bird because we were taking oh it was a left on a green light and it's one of those lights at a busy intersection that like if i don't get through this left green i'm going to be late to the place i'm going not because i'm bad with time management but because <laughs> of the person in front of me solely and they like didn't pay attention i had to give them a little beep like a, a little courteous beep honk like hey you're looking down at your phone and there's a hundred yards of space in front of you and then they like accelerated slower than i can jog and i'm not quick and they like they went through a red and there was no chance I could get through at that point. And so I, I flipped them the bird, like, fuck you, you inconsiderate piece of shit. And afterward I was like, man, that's, that's not how you want to behave at 30. I always, I always get road rage at the rotaries with like the two lane rotaries. Mm. Those are oh, fucking yeah. brutal. And like when I'm driving in Boston, like I'm, I think crazy shit. I'm like, I'm going to get on fucking fight him and pull the car open. And I'm like, I never do it, but I just like, <laughs> get, I get so mad getting cut off by like trucks. I'm like so angry. When like a Ford Raptor cuts me off, it's like I need to murder that person right now. So, <laughs> and take their well, I'm in the passenger trust. seat. My wife is driving, yeah. 
and I don't know specifically what went wrong, but someone was furious at her and I'm in the passenger seat. So I gave him like the thumbs down. Now he's furious at me. I was ready to beat him up. Like, not that I was like actively going for it, but it's like, this is a choose your own adventure book, bitch. And Mm -hmm. you have to decide if you really want this. I'm not playing tough guy. Everyone on this call would easily defeat this man, right? He, He was probably my age, but shorter, a fucking marshmallow of a fat piece of shit with no muscles. And, and yeah, there's, there's no chance this guy poses a threat to any, unless he's a good shot, unless he's a good shot, but, um, that he is. <laughs> yeah. so he's all being Mr. Tough guy. And I'm just like, as far as you want to go, what do you want to do next? Do you like, do, do you want to pull over? Do you want to, what do you want to do? He didn't want that. What do you want to do? Huh? Him. What do you yeah. want to do? You're Randy I, Marsh. <laughs> Randy Marsh, who's that? Yeah, from South the, Park. The dad from South oh, Park. Yeah. My, my grandpa. Uh, I'm a dumbass, I guess. Back in like the no, no, days. I like no, no. But he wanted Randy to. Did this. He like that's what was Randy's problem. He too. picked the guy a was fight with him. my family. I didn't. The ask guy was for this. picking a fight with Randy's family. He didn't ask for it either. He was wearing the other guy was wearing a cape. <laughs> I don't think my guy had a cape on. I fully but. support uh, people getting beaten up in traffic. I like. Uh, I saw a video not too long ago where two guys out got out, had mutual fucking combat. One of them got his ass whipped a little. They ju- they stood up. I think they shook hands and then went their separate ways. It was like it was, was a Reddit beauty. video. I saw it on Reddit. Yeah, yeah, I, I may have seen it also. I love yeah, a good road I, rage video. Did you see the one during the pandemic in Australia? There was this like. Is it the guy who Shred- used the boomerang? Is it was the that? it was a guy with a boomerang. <laughs> yeah. If I recall, either shirtless or in like a thin like tank top, and he's jacked. Shirtless and sailor. I guess the guy in the car he was attacking was some doctor. And <laughs> this guy like comes up and like knocks his rear view mirror off with a boomerang and is like smacking it on his window, like, You vaccinated my family. You oh, vaccinated <laughs> yeah, he's freaking you're trying to look- fucking job me, mate. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you gave my family, thing? did you? You gave him the jib? And he's like freaking, and this guy's like shredded. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm anywhere but inside that car right now because he what the was fuck? freaking out. Yeah, You're telling me screaming. that there's a video of an Australian man attacking a doctor who vaccinated his family with a boomerang. I may hit, I, the, the boomerang and the Australian man attacking are for sure. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the doctor thing was like, oh, you gave him the COVID vaccine, did you? We'll see what we think about that. And he starts <laughs> banging on. He his does car. break the window. He breaks the passenger like window, not just the mirror. I think. I think he really breaks the window. I think you're right. Yeah. I got. Yeah, I'll find wild. that video after the show. That that actually sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, the kind of video Kyle would like. It's because the guy. But, the guy was shredded. He 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 was in prime beat your ass in traffic shape. Like no one's mm, stepping out. He's to been training for this moment. Yeah. I like when they have like a little comedic timing to them. I saw one where the guy gets out and starts shit with the other guy, and he's got some sort of mall ninja sword that like folds up until it's six inches long, but then like sha 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 until it's like this long, like thin blade, swingy blade. And and the other guy's like, Whoa, what the fuck? You have a sword? And they and the guy's filming it. He's like, Oh, homeboy got a sword. What the fuck? Yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, dude. Play it safe, because the other guy's like, no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be for the sword wielding man. And, they, and so the sword man like retreats, and he's like, oh wait, homeboy got something in his trunk. What he got? What he got? Guy's popping his trunk. Oh, he got a gun. <laughs> he's got like an AR-15. <laughs> you see him grab the AR-15 and like pull it up here, and then the video turns off. And it's, I'm like, I hope that was fake because the comedic timing's perfect. It's just like the <laughs> one. There's one where there's a motorcycle, uh, a guy on his motorcycle Baseball riding in an guy. alleyway. And uh, some guy stops him and like mugs him with a knife. And he's like, yeah, yeah, take the bike, man. Take the bike, man. And then all of a sudden the song cuts it. Just the two of us. And he like pulls the clock <laughs> out and puts it. And he's like pointing at the guy's back and the video cuts. And I'm sure that one's fake. That one's definitely some. Buddy. I've seen that reel. Uh, it, it wasn't in America. It was it's South America somewhere. And the guy like doesn't resist. He lets him take the motorcycle. And then he unloads like six into him. The caption said the victim. The victim. Like I was waiting for someone to lost take that the bike, bike with <laughs> yeah. a cop. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, I yeah. saw like South America has some of the best carjacking videos. I saw one, a lot of scooter robberies in South America, and I saw one where these two guys on a scooter tried to stop these other two guys who were just walking and and rob them, and then you know go off into the night on their scooter, and they had a machete, and the other the people they were accosting, one of them had a gun. 
And so what ended up happening is that I guess these two guys, the one with the gun who was about to be robbed, I guess they were also criminals. And so they <laughs> then robbed the robbers and then it's them riding away, two of them on a on a moped. So like they were about to get robbed and they're like, no, you know what, actually, this isn't cool. Give us your moped. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little a little correct corrective justice there. I liked that. Good for them. I I like it also, when you the, go. the law in uh, South America with guns and self defense seems to be that as long as they're within seven to eight hundred yards of you, <laughs> you, you can pursue them, you can kill them, you can shoot them. Like you see an American, like be like blah blah. All right, I neutralized the Seven Eleven thief, and he's laying there being like my legs, my <laughs> legs. In fucking Honduras. They they don't stop shooting. They reload. They get friends. They kill you. They murder you. Same with Asia. They have a cookout around your body. They seem hmm. to. Yeah, they, they play for keeps in Honduras and in Guatemala and all those places that I don't want to visit. I don't blame the road rage, guys. Like, driving is... People don't appreciate the gravity of how dangerous driving is. Like, just yeah. how easy it is to fucking die. Like, I, I, th I think it should be justified if somebody seriously cuts you off in a very dangerous way to just beat their ass for, like, 10 seconds. Like, that should be legal. Just, just, just 10 seconds? Well, it's going to be hard to get them to agree to it. Well, <laughs> if, the law, if the law agrees, you should just, have, like, call a cop so we can come by and watch. Be like, all right, get, like, a timer. Like, stop, watch, go. <laughs> you, get be, your, you get your time. <laughs> I'd be good with that. Everyone yeah. would be a lot more courteous if they knew. Oh, yeah. We that, have way oh, less. Way I was waiting for Woody's reaction. Woody went... Ooh. Oh yeah. What do you what do you like, would be the guy? I was waiting oh. for Woody to agree that the video was legit and I, I I saw it in his eyes. He was like, Yes. That Kyle's exactly video. right. That was me reacting to the link he put in the chat. Uh for people watching, Kyle linked in the chat. Look like it was maybe not America outside some sort of quickie mart. And someone came along with a drive by and shot I looked at it quickly. Three, four people? Three people. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, they come Jeez. back with G chains. It's crazy. Like, 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 I think that was Mexico. It's a cartel hit or something like that from mm -hmm. at least a year ago. I see it crop up every now and then. But the thing that strikes me is how that the drive-by comes by and, and shoots all these people who are just outside some little bar tiki thing. To the left of them, parked in a car with the lights off, though, is the second team. So the first team, like, wheels out of there, and the second one pulls out and, like, gets the survivors. It's crazy. Yeah, I just saw that. They made Oh, sure I didn't know the whole thing dead. was there. Then they come up with G18s, yeah. Fucking fully yeah. automatic lock pistols, which I see those far too much now on, like, social media. It's a real flex. And, uh, Is it for, easy to convert? Yeah, yeah. And the P, it's just these... I think it's three little pieces, but one of them's a bolt or, or like, a pin, really. So it's, it's, this, it's just a little bit of uh, aluminum and steel... And you've got a fully automatic Glock. And then those mags are everywhere. Those 33, 31, mm -hmm. 32, something like that round mags. And then I think drums have been coming out more and more. They used to be, the, the drum I shot a decade ago was handmade. Like there, nobody sold a drum. A decade ago, it. they were a little unreliable. I don't know if, if I was to conduct a Quickie Mart murder, I don't know that I'd go drum because yeah. yeah, maybe I'm out of date. Thank you.